the further innovation from Sutton and Bartow is that you can use delta, this phasic dopamine signal, not only to train this kind of critic, which is essentially the thing that's predicting future reward values, but also the actor, which is something that's actually operating in the world and whose actions give rise to the reward in the first place. And so this is uh, essentially known as the actor critic framework. Again, this is exactly what's used in modern reinforcement learning uh, algorithms. And it's a good description of what we just talked about with the uh, way that dopamine modulates the go and no-go pathways in the basal ganglia. So in other words, this is kind of a more abstract mathematical framework for exactly what's happening in the basal ganglia, that we have dopamine changing the likelihood of taking actions in the actor system, which is what we're thinking about the basal ganglia as being, um, according to kind of differences in reward prediction error, which is what that dopamine signal in, uh, encompasses. So basically, the mathematics of reinforcement learning provides a nice, clear, principled mathematical framework for understanding what's happening in the biology of the brain. And this connection between the abstract mathematical framework and the real underlying biology is quite remarkable. However, the uh, reality in, in the brain is a little bit more complicated than that simple story. And we've done a fair amount of work trying to understand that. And what we've seen is that, in fact, this, this really nice idea, mathematical idea, that you have this kind of one underlying equation and you can understand the future kind of CS level firing and the kind of responses at the moment of reward itself, all with this one equation, it doesn't quite work that way in the brain, we think. Uh, instead, we think that there is a separate system that seems to be responsible for this CS kind of responding and uh, a different separate system that is respons responsible for essentially blocking the burst of dopamine that would otherwise occur at the time of reward and furthermore creating this dip in dopamine if you don't get the reward that you expected. And so it turns out in the brain that in fact this uh, burst that you get here at the time of the condition stimulus can actually be quite independent of whether or not you get a burst here or not at the time of the reward. And there's various other indications that the neural mechanisms that support these two systems are actually separable. There's two different neural systems. And so uh, actually we think it's more like the Riscorla Wagner learning rule, which describes events at the time of reward, and then a separate learning system uh, that happens at the time of the condition stimulus. So this condition stimulus learning we call the learned value, so LV, and then the learning that's happening at the time of the reward is the primary value and if you put these the other way, it just so happens this diagram works better this way, um, that's spelled or pronounced Pavlov, P-V-L-V. Um, and so that's kind of a nice pun, the Pavlov learning algorithm. Um, and so it, the, the core principle is that there really are these two separate brain systems. And in fact, the amygdala, so this is the basal lateral amygdala, and here we have the central nucleus of the amygdala, that those seem to be the, the primary brain systems responsible for learning to associate conditioned stimuli with uh, you know, uh, reward value, which eventually ends up driving those kind of bursts of dopamine in the SNC and also the other main dopamine nucleus, the ventral tegmental area. Um, and that there is a separate network in the ventral medial striatum, the VS, uh, which is very important for doing the primary value component of learning. So the VS uh, has separate uh, subpopulations of neurons. This is again like the basal ganglia system that we just looked at. Um, and it turns out as a further kind of wrinkle to how the system works, there's a st distinction between patch uh, or striosome uh, com components of that, of that circuit versus the matrix or matrosome components of that circuit. And Grabiel is somebody who's pioneered work in this area. And so in the, in the ventral stratum, these may play an important distinct role in modulating and controlling uh, how the dopamine system responds at the time when you get a primary reward or a, an unconditioned stimulus as compared to the conditioned stimulus. 
and it also it turns out biologically that there's a special brain system called the lateral habenula, which is getting a lot of attention more recently, um, which is particularly important for driving those dips in phasic dopamine firing. So, and those, the lateral habenula gets its inputs from this other population of ventral striated neurons. So we've basically developed models that uh, simulate the uh, separate pathways here, try to understand how uh, the dynamics of learning in the amygdala operate. It turns out there's uh, two different levels of learning here, the uh, kind of more cortical-like learning of features and kind of complex distributed representations that we think is, is happening in the basal lateral amygdala. And then the central nucleus of the amygdala actually is very much like the uh, uh, striatum, it's like the basal ganglia. And so there's sort of this basal ganglia level of, of both of these systems, which has these go, no go, kind of direct, indirect type of opponent process dynamics. And that seems to be important for actual kind of bottom line encoding of uh, not only should we fire a phasic dopamine response to condition stimuli, but also triggering behavioral actions, uh, for example, to approach a condition stimulus, um, to motivate action in response to a condition stimulus, um, to trigger fear responses in, in response uh, to uh, things that have been associated with negative outcomes. All of those uh, are driven by uh, these basal ganglia-like systems in the central amygdala. And so you can understand this is sort of a primordial, more lower level uh, core kind of uh, action selection system uh, in the basal ganglia proper up going into the dorsal striatum, which we talked about uh, previously as kind of the main part of the striatum we focused on is more of the general purpose action selection system. Uh, and then primary rewards themselves actually come from the lateral hypothalamus LH. So this is where the unconditioned stimuli actually originate. Uh, mostly uh, if you get a food stimulus that activates the hypothalamus and that drives neurons in the amygdala and that uh, gives rise to that kind of primary response uh, from the uh, reward itself. But again, uh, the primary response of the reward can be blocked by these descending projections from the PV system uh, in the ventral striatum and, and that kind of gives you this ability to not respond to predicted or expected rewards. And so logically there has to be a clear connection and we do think there is lots of opportunity for connection between uh, CS level events and, and US level events but it really does seem like it's separate brain systems supporting each of these. Um, this is more detail on kind of the overall structure of our model. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting literature about the effects of context encoded through the hippocampus and the ventral me medial prefrontal cortex that uh, really play a key role in regulating how the amygdala responds to different condition stimuli. Here the PV system over here uh, gets also input from cortical areas helping to support the uh, timing of when you expect these rewards and when to kind of cancel them out. And as we mentioned, it goes through the lateral havenula. Uh, there's this rostral medial tegmental gyrus, the RMTG, um, and that's very important there as well. And then this is the kind of more complete version of the model. And obviously this is very complicated. Uh, evolution has had a long time to kind of tweak these circuits, build in, uh, lots of interesting properties and we've tried to really understand how these might work at a computational level uh, and the key idea is that you do have this opponent process much like the basal ganglia where you have sort of a go no-go kind of dynamic uh, and that again everywhere we look that seems to be a really important principle in the brain of having these competitive uh, opponent type of dynamics to give you a reasonable relative kind of balanced uh, relational type of encoding of the world as opposed to having absolute thresholds uh, which are much more rigid and hard to uh, to calibrate. So and then the ventral stratum also has many layers of these opponent processes again indicated by the D1 versus D2 dopamine receptors um, and so these play a role in 
appetitive or positive reinforcement versus punishment or negative reinforcement signals. Um, there may be separate pathways encoding each of those and opponent processes within each of those. So again, it gets quite complicated. And we have a nice uh, detailed model of this that is available and will soon be available in our new simulator, but is currently only available in the existing C++ software. Seamer.